I got a new bandsaw to get rid of. This guy that I've had for quite a while. It's just this is kind of a, just a little hobby one. Uh, it's light, light duty, and has a very small throw here. So I'm opting for a slightly larger bench top. This is a Wen bandsaw over here. And uh, it's bigger, it's heavier duty, and has a much more powerful motor. So let's open it up. Okay, this is a Wen 10 inch bandsaw, model number 3962. It's 120 volt. Uh, it's got a 3.5 amp uh, motor in it. Uh, the actual cut throat is uh, nine and three quarter inches, but the thickness of cut is six inches, which is what sold me on it. It's a two speed model. Uh, top speed is uh, 26, 20 foot per minute, and the low speed is 15, 20 foot per minute. Blade length is 72 inches. It comes with a heavy-duty stand that I will not be assembling. I don't need it. That looks like a lot of assembly required. Jeez. Oh, Look at that. I think a good chunk of the weight is the stand. This is uh, the legs of the stand. There we go. Man. Oh, it already has a blade on it. Look how big a throat this thing has. Uh, the question is, can it can it actually cut stock that thick? Uh, does it have the uh, the backbone to do it? So it has two speeds, 26, 20 RPM, FPMs. Oh yeah, FPMs. So that's foot per sec, or per, that's foot per minute. So that's the uh, how many feet of uh, of saw blade goes by your stock as you're working, and then uh, the slow speed is. 1520 foot per minute and the change happens down here with this belt and pulley pulley size change this is nice it's a it's a sort of a ribbed uh, gate style belt all right so here's the uh, the guide lowering mechanism here pretty nice there is a little bit of rough work here this probably needs to get file down. This aluminum isn't really well finished. Uh, there's some weights here, balance weights. Uh, that's a little spooky because if those come off and you play hell to try to balance it again, I might just put a couple of drops of crazy glue there just as a, uh, as a little safety measure. I like the switch. So it's got a safety I think this is for the light here. Oh, here it is. So oh, that's kind of cool. Little LED. Not sure what this is. I think it might be to adjust the blade forward and back on the wheel to make sure it isn't uh, sort of wanting to come off. This is about about 25 pounds. I got a feeling that one's a little heavier. Wow, it's perfect. It's a little high. I think it's going to be a little high on me, but I can live with this. All right, that's going to fit perfect on my base. Doesn't take up any more room other than vertical. That's kind of cool. Woo! All right, let's start assembly. No room here. Assembly. Let's see, I'm going to need a 14 millimeter open end Phillips screwdriver. All right, first thing they ask you to do is install the table. So let's do it. All right, here's some hardware. All right, so the table is not cast iron. It's uh, aluminum, cast, and then milled uh, for a flat surface, more or less, I think. And it's got the mounting bolts already on it. All right, let's go put this thing on. Okay, so it's a lot easier to align these bolts if you pop out that insert and then angle the uh, table base just a little bit. Alright, that does it. Rock back into place. 
place. Down. That looks pretty good. Next step is to put the rails for uh, the cutting fence. This is attached. See how this works. So, that's what these are for, I guess. You're supposed to just put these on loosely. And then slide this on, ruler side up. And then we snug them down. I'm not sure this uh, ruler is going to be useful or meaningful in any way, but we'll see. So this is the, the actual cutting fence and uh, it's got a nice extrusion here that fits on the rail and slides in and then locks in pretty nice. It's not fantastic, but it's pretty good. If you look at the finish on these two bores and you can see where they uh, softened the edge, they counted it down, but if you look at this, you can see how they did no such thing. This is like almost razor sharp. Fast assembly, fast uh, drilling, and very little attention to smoothing things out. But this little uh, sight line for measurements is pretty nice. It's pretty nice. I guess I'll have to uh, work out the adjustment so it's somewhat accurate anyway. Little feature, you can see this extrusion has a slot here and a slot here and that slot uh, is what's uh, attached to these uh, I guess these are butterfly nuts uh, but the bolt in there and you can actually take this and take it off and then rotate it so that this L extension is down and you can cut really thin pieces uh, without having a, your fence in the way uh, that's kind of a nice little feature there that's one of those things that you're always like taking a little piece of wood to do and this has it on there checking square uh, the blade with the table using the fence I can see that it's just slightly off uh, but enough to make a difference so I need to uh, raise the front of it or this side up just a hair and I can do it over here uh, and then I'll readjust here so they tell you to use a combination square to square this off but I'm using a draftsman's triangle it's a little more accurate and uh, it fits perfect in here and that is rock on right there so I need to set it the little stop bolt right there has a tiny gap in it so I gotta raise it so I can bring it back to zero every time I'm just gonna raise this up until it's touching right there that should do it I'll set that little line to zero a little better and then we should be pretty accurate you can see that this thing is about as level as I'm gonna get it uh, and now I can turn uh, this thing on a bevel and check uh, how accurate those markings are to reality there uh, and see uh, if I can rely on them at all all right, so I'm going to set it at uh, the two that I'll probably use, which is 45 and 27 and a half. So let's see what it shows at 27 and a half. Check it out. I've got it set at right at 27 and a half. Best I can do with this kind of a gross scale on this thing. And then here, um, you can see how close that is. That's at 27. And like a quarter, man. That's just ridiculously close. That I would never have thought that. So, uh, well, I'm still not going to use that, but I'll still use this angle finder. But uh, that's kind of cool. So uh, the mechanism actually has a little bolt head right there that acts as a stop, and it looks like it's got a little bit of a slot in it so that you can add a, a, a degree or two to adjust it. Uh, our zero mark is right on the money. Let's see what the table's at. That's right on the mark. All right, well, I thought I was gonna have to tinker with this thing a little more, but that's about as accurate as I need it, that's for sure.
Hi, I'm going through the adjustments of the, uh, these guide bearings for the blades and what I'm finding is that they're really close to being perfectly uh, adjusted. I did have to adjust the bearing uh, that rides or rides near uh, the spine of the blade back here and now the lateral ones uh, one of them the one on this one is perfect this one needs to be moved in just about a quarter of a millimeter just barely off but I want to get it a little closer and the way I like to do this is I like to move the blade uh, and, and without shifting it to either side and make sure that it's not moving the bearing but if you just barely touch it, it moves the bearing. So that's perfect right there. Now there's like no slop in it at all. Right, so uh, this is looking pretty good. I did tension the blade a little bit. It was just a touch um, too loose, but there's nothing too tensioning it. There's a couple of thrust bearings down here that need to be just behind the blade and just giving them a quick look uh, they're definitely close enough I'm not going to mess with those at all now I've got the fence up against the blade and I'm going to set this zero marker uh, by moving the rail a little bit I think I can get enough play to do it that looks pretty good. All right, looks like I'll be able to do it. Let me just get it firm and tighten it up. I think it's time to test it. Uh, I'm going to be very careful because I don't have it bolted down. But I'm going to cut a sliver off this. Uh, but let's, uh, I got an idea. Let's plug it in. Let's see what it sounds like when it's running. Pretty quiet. It's touching a bearing somewhere. Let's go ahead and run it. See how tight that that uh, grain is. This is hard stuff. I think I can cut a disc out of this. <laughs> See what it does. impressed that's pretty good this is not the hardest work wood in the world it's uh, camphor so it tends to be kind of soft but still and eh, it smells like Bengay so still that's a pretty nice even cut all right let's try a long cut If I was going to give it a review, uh, for the money, it's fantastic. Uh, durability is the big question here on. How well everything kind of stays in, um, in, in, in adjustment and continue to work. How durable uh, that motor is. Uh, otherwise, shoot, I, I paid less than, uh, I think less than $270 for this. Uh, American. $270 free shipping, which is just crazy it's a hundred pound item so um I like it I would recommend it for uh, anybody who 
needs a small bandsaw that can uh, do almost big bandsaw work. 